Hello and welcome back everyone here to the MPGL wildcard semifinals for season six. We are in the midst of a best of five between Invasion Esports and the Prime. Invasion, they get that free game one just because Prime was running really late and then they do basically dominate there in game number two and uh, here we go into game three it is match point for invasion right now looking at the bands they will respect the elder titan they'll take it out death prophet fallen as well and before we get too far i'm helium and joining me once again it's going to be blaze how are you doing I'm doing pretty good looking forward to seeing this match up here maybe something a little bit closer to last time we saw some good really good plays from a few of the players there, Koala in particular, really performed well in a couple of fights, but we need something more than just a couple of fights. They need to draft a little bit better, they ban out the other Titan here, and uh, maybe get something a little bit more in terms of execution when it comes down to the actual game. I still think they have the potential to take another, or not another, an actual game off of Invasion. Not sure if they can reverse all kill the series, but they can certainly try. Um, reminder that uh, whoever goes and uh, takes this series is going to be going up against MVP Hot Six. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when. Do you know? Uh, I think it is actually just going to be tomorrow. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Tomorrow's the 14th, right? Uh, yes, yep. it is. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it should be tomorrow, and I think it's going to be starting at the same time, which is going to be, what, 1900 Singapore time. And it was about 6 a.m. Eastern here, if you're watching from Ten the Americas. Remaining. The eastern mm -hmm. side of the Americas, I should specify further. Uh, <laughs> Invasion Esports. We saw this a little bit yesterday. Uh, and those games that we're going. They're going green. They're picking up that Viper and the Tidehunter. Yeah, you gotta go blue, gotta go green. Have a nice little matchup of the colors, sparring off. But, you know, Viper Tide, they have some really cool combos. And the fact that, like, the Viper loves to put out damage over an extended period of time in a fight. And Tidehunter uh, loves to really give you the extra oomph to start it off right. He always brings in the Ravage Anchor Smash opener. And that's gonna take a decent chunk of HP off of pretty much anybody that doesn't have a BKB. So you combine that with the ability to for Viper to execute people with the Nether Toxin. You start off the fight right, you're going to be getting a kill or two very early on, and then you're going to be able to follow that up with a lot of momentum. So whenever Ravage is available, the team fight's there. Tide, I think, is always a valuable first pick. And uh, opening up with the Viper for some lane sustain. They've got the early game through lanes of Viper. They've got the mid to late game through the team fight of Tidehunter, and it's another difficult draft opener to deal with. Yeah, it is. Like you said, Viper going to dominate the lane. Tidehunter literally doesn't matter what he does in the lane. Like, because once he gets a certain level, he can farm stacks in the jungle or the ancient stacks just as easily. It doesn't matter the size of it. He'll bring it down, and that does allow Tidehunter, even having a rough off lane, to just pick up ridiculously big game-winning items like Blink uh, and Refresher, because that's all you need. <laughs> mana boots, I guess, because you need the mana. Uh, but it will be Razor and Nature's Prophet. They do take away Ghosts, uh, one of his favorite heroes. Maybe maybe he hates it, I don't know, but they sure drafted a lot for Ghost. Uh, he has a pretty rough go of things in the last game just because there were a lot of heroes that excelled in killing Nature's Prophet, but it doesn't matter. They came out with the win, and they're looking for another one here as Naga Siren will be taken out there by the Prime. Now over to Invasion. You know, a very well-respected hero on the SCA scene. We've seen a lot of very powerful micro-oriented players uh, make that hero do some work for them. And uh, we've often seen it at first band in certain matchups between the teams. So, banning out once again here, uh, hero still can be extremely broken when you get the Radiance up early enough. And, yeah, we're just not going to see it in this uh, third game. Obviously, it was banned out in the first phase in game two. So, we do see... Uh, the banning phase switched over to Invasion. I'm curious what tack they bring to it. Like, they've already gotten the mid-bans here with the Death Prophet and the Brewmaster, but now that the Razor's yeah, picked up, back. Nature Prophet is certainly going to be a core. They're like, okay, let's shift focus and kind of go for those pseudo-supports. Jakiro can be running multiple roles, but in the SEA scene, it still is 80-plus percent of the time going to be a support. And uh, they are emphasizing that uh, ability to just be more active, be more involved. And the, the Jakiro negates that. He crushes your space and map control with his liquid fire bringing down towers. And he can really screw over your initiations with Ice Pass. So it's a, a worthy ban. And uh, we're going to have to see if they follow that up with something that would have been shut down by it. Yep, just, you know, respecting the push. It, it's not 6.81. Like, the pushing death ball isn't the go-to strategy. But it still does work. It has its merits. 
and they see the Nature's Prophet, they see the potential for the Razor to go Ags, and they get a little scared, so they'll ban out the Jakiro, and, and there you go, the Primer, like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and take out that Medusa as well. You don't want to deal with that yeah. Stone Gaze, and the potential for everyone to be held in place by a Ravage, the physical damage extra coming out from Nether Toxin would be terrifying, and now... More, they didn't know the Witch Doctor was there, but now the Death Ward. And we saw Invasion Esports. This is what they did in the second banding phase of the, the first game we saw. They took out Witch Doctor. They took out Earthshaker. Those are comfortable heroes for the Prime. And this one, since they have the first pick, they will ban out the Earthshaker and they'll pick themselves the Witch Doctor. So, nice. Getting inside of the Prime's head on the draft, perhaps. Yeah, I think that Invasion have a really good setup here to set up Viper as the anchor hero. He can get on the front line. He can uh, have a maxed out Corrosive skin by a very early point in time, maybe by level 9 or 10. And uh, which is going to keep him sustained with the Voodoo Restoration? He'll be on the front line and probably build up a mechanism. And as difficult as it's going to be to bring him down, if they ever commit too much to him, then Viper, the Tatar is just going to blink it and ravage, and that's going to absolutely blow up the Prime. They actually don't have that great of range right now as far as heroes go. Like, uh, 200, 600, 200, 600 range heroes is not bad, but they don't do anything outside of 600 range. They have Wrath of Nature, they have Plasma Field, but as soon as those spells are in, you know exactly where they're going to be positioned. Yeah. Within 600 uh, units of the Viper, trying to right-click him or whoever's on the front line, and uh, the Tide is just going to be set up for some really easy circles here. Like, the Wraith King, at least, once he gets initiated on, will be able to come back with that second life. And that's nice, but I don't think it's the make or break thing here. I think they need a Centaur or something on top of that to get some more activity, some more mobility, and uh, make it less predictable in their movement patterns. I like the Wraith King, though. I mean, you throw the Ravage, you throw these big combos down... Wraith King will just come back with another life. He, if he gets even really good farm in the early game and maybe gets some kills, he can get to the farming. Eh, I mean, I guess we don't know, right? Like it's ambiguous. It's uh, honestly a good third pick just in general. I think for that reason. But if it is farming, he maybe has a good game. He gets to the point where if he goes in, he can like force Tidehunter to ravage. Like definitely is going to be getting a Viper Strike. Maybe even a Death Ward goes down just to kill him once, and he comes back like. You know, it could work out, but yeah, good point. We'll see whether he supports or he carries a couple more picks. We'll reveal that, of course. Invasion now looking for their fourth. There is no Chronosphere to make Witch Doctor's life literally the easiest thing in the world. Uh, Witch Doctor and Skyrath will be that next pickup. Uh, I guess Witch Doctor's got the, the big spikes from the Ravage to make his Death Ward uh, pretty easy to, to throw out. But we'll see what they do if they want to add any more AoE teamfight control with that last pick. Yeah. And along with that, like Witch Doctor like is not up against silences right now. Like obviously the Furion can and go for the stun. Orchid, but there is literally just the Wraithfire Blast to interrupt the channeling spell other than killing off the hero himself. So if Skyrath silences that one stun hero, then suddenly that death ward is guaranteed. If they draft a couple more stuns here with their next two picks, they'll have to wait out uh one of those cooldowns. Maybe they'll but... just go core witch doctor. Obviously. It's just it's just too good. But now uh Right now, we're going to see the Ancient Apparition come out, and I would like to see these two in a support duo, honestly. Wraith King Ancient Apparition is really strong as far as just early damage. You get a lot of right clicks off with Wraith Fire Blast, with uh, the Ice Vortex. They both have slows as well as the stun, and uh, the Cold Feet can also be set up really nicely by the Wraith Fire Blast. So these guys can be very active early while still getting a lot of independent experience from, like, pulling, because you do need to get that level 6 up on AA. And uh, as far as Core Wraithkin goes, I kind of feel like in this item progression, you'd have to go for both Blink and BKB, yeah, and then you'd both. still be kited like still crazy by the Viper Strike. So it just doesn't seem worth it to me. It's the S and Y. Blink, S and Y, man. That's easy. And drums. Right. Race car, Wraith King to stay at normal move speed once you are stricken by the Viper. Yeah. Better about Lincoln Sphere, which just seems absurd, but... Yeah, it seems yeah. bad, because you can get Viper Strike on a 12-second cooldown anyways. Which is actually the same as Lincoln's, right? Yeah, approximately. But yeah, so maybe that would work in his favor. I don't know. Either way, that's probably not what we're going to see. Uh, we'll see the Slark ban out. Eh, it seems like a pretty good pick. I mean, there's... Like, Tidehunter, the Ravage, is, like, almost enough AoE to deal with the Shadow Dance. Like, it's a pretty uh, hefty stun duration, and it will hit him, obviously, through the Shadow Dance. But... Um don't want to have to deal with the slark anyways that hero is it's just aggravating i think that's the only word for it no there's definitely more words for it but aggravating is a good one yeah certainly so uh yeah taking off the table the amber spirit will go as well just in case they wanted to really 
ramp up their late game with a hero that can... I mean, they all have all the space creation tools for it, right? Like, we said they're going to win the lanes, they're going to win the early fights. If they get a really good hardcore hero to close this one out, then the Prime will have a rough time of it. The Ancient Apparition counters a few heroes, but Ember is not one of them, and uh, it's definitely a, to their merit that they band it out. They've actually banned out four c cores in quick succession here. Void, Naga, Dusa, and Ember. They want to be the late-game dominators, but... I mean, Invasion in the end are still going to be able to pick up one good carry hero. We'll see exactly what it's going to be. If it's like a Spectre or something, I think that would be pretty good. It would definitely be a denial pick in the sense that Ancient Prophet, Ancient Apparition, they would love to have a Global Strat with a Wrath of Nature, a Ice Blast, and a Haunt. But uh, Lycan's going to be the pick. It has higher tempo. That means even if the Prime pick up the Spectre for their last pick, they're still going to have a, a Wolf at their door um, making sure that that early to mid game is going to be extremely profitable for Invasion. Yeah, really three wolves at their door, technically. I think Lycan should uh, do his math. Two, two, two and a half wolves? Yeah. Was that a two and a half man reference? It's a sitcom, but it's also <laughs> the fact that he's half yeah. wolf, so. <laughs> you, you got You got to go with it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Pick up I the pace it. here, Helium. Sorry, man. It's What time is it even? It's 8 in the morning, and I want the Rios to sleep. I appreciated the reference. I got it. Our Southeast Asian audience might not. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. But, hey, it's a show. It's not very good, so don't bother yeah. watching it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like, like you said, the high tempo from the Lycan is going to be terrifying, and he is a really, really strong carry. We've seen, even going into the late game, Arteezy has really illustrated that, and it will be FZ, FZ, so it might even be a mid Lycan, uh, which means, well, okay, supporting, so it's going to be that, yeah, it's Kachik, Imba, Ghost, and FZ, FZ. Those are going to be the three core heroes there. Witch Doctor, Skyrath supporting. Unfortunately for myself, I won't see a core Witch Doctor. I feel like Invasion would probably have the skills to pull it off here. Uh, but they're not going to go for it. And the Doom nor, was the nor last would pick, anyone. by the way. <laughs> nor would anyone. I don't know, dude. I feel like there's some teams out there that might... Dude, it's about as legit as my farming Crystal Maiden strat. You I'm get that Blink, sure Agonim's BKB. Shadowblade, Dagon, Witch Doctor is the way to the truth. Oh, wow. But Doom is going to be really strong here. Uh, Y2K is going to be able to Doom Tidehunter every fight, and Kraken Shell is not going to help you out of that one. You're not going to be able to rev it until that Doom expires. And that's going to be frustrating. Um, it doesn't negate, uh, as we've talked about in the past, the passes until Agnum Set just picked up. So it's not going to be good against Viper, who's just going to have that corrosive skin anyways. It's not going to stop the Lycan from critting in a shapeshift. But if you get it on Ghost every fight, that's plenty. You're still going to be able to... Uh, prevent the Ravage, or delay the Ravage, and that's going to be very consequential. But we'll see if it's too greedy. Like right now, uh, I mean, I was talking about Spectre, so I can't really talk about greed, but uh, in the end, he's still going to be taking a lot the off the map. A lot of people like, building that Urn Spectre now? Like, It's okay, but I mean, I still think that in the end, you're expecting a lot of gold to come out of the map, that when you already have a Nature's Prophet and an Ancient Apparition trying to farm up big items as well as perhaps the Razor. We'll see his ta how it fares in the laning phase, but it just seems like it's a tall order for them. Either way, uh, we're going to see them spread the map here, and I guess we'll go into some introductions. Yeah, we'll look over at Invasion here. Ghost quickly dropping that ward to get some vision on the pole and also behind the tower in both directions, which is going to be very beneficial to him in the off lane. On the Tide Hunter, and I know we talked about it yesterday. There's no wards being put down in this area to block out the ancients here. And you said, and I think you said it well, if you let Tide through the draft, you need to deal with the enemy's ancients. Maybe they'll put a ward later because sometimes the stacking doesn't happen in the first two minutes. But, uh, anyways, continuing with the introductions, all the way to the bottom lane, we'll find ADTR supporting on the Skyrath Mage. Alongside him, it's OK on the Witch Doctor, FCFZ on the Lycan, and now back towards mid, it's Kachik Imba on the Viper. Should be pretty interesting here. It looks like it's going to be a try versus a try, though. So excited to see how that pans out. It looks like they won't be able to block off Ancients because they're going to be pretty preoccupied down bottom, making sure there's no lane ward here with this sentry. And, yeah, it's just going to be a 1v1 matchup between Furion and Tide, which both of them have something to bring to the table on that one. The Kraken Shell pretty good against Treants, but Ghost being a 6 range hero is not too screwed over. So looking... Or actually, I said Ghost. Uh, it's Koala, of course. Ghost is not the only Nature Prophet player in the world, but sometimes pretty, pretty it feels sure that he is. <laughs> Anyways, looking at the tri lane here uh, on the bottom lane, we're going to be seeing Nefari taking the farm. He's going to be going for an early Basilius here on the Razor, or a static link up, so pretty ambitious. He really wants to like 
just absolutely drain this Lycan's damage, but he's howling away. Anyways, Wraith King's going to be played support by Monang. He's going to be alongside Phoenix, who's running the Ancient Apparition. They're going to try to make things happen early on with Chilling Touch, Wraithfire Blast, so on. And uh, that's going to leave the mid lane to the Doom. Actually heard the Chilling, but uh, not really getting too much out of that other than some extra farm. And that's a pretty big cooldown, 40 seconds. They're not going to be able to have their prime source of damage in this tri lane. The Wraith King will hold on to his buff a little bit longer than the others. In the end, though, we look over at mid lane. It is Doom with a Devour, Scorched Earth, and Bottle buildup. Just trying to stay on the lane as long as possible. And this is very, like, TI1-esque. This is, like, the, for the longest time, actually, he's taking a lot of damage here. The Poison Attack of Nether Toxin. This is a low armor hero. Zero armor, in fact. And uh, that Bottle Sip is just going to keep him in an okay position, but he's not going to be able to farm in the lane. But as I was saying, this is a, a very kind of War of Attrition type um, lane matchup because the Doom actually just stays here, doesn't have to actually go to the Creep Wave as long as he gets in Devour range every time that's off cooldown. He can still get gold out of the lane. He doesn't have to win the lane. He can just lose it less, get something, and be able to transition into an okay mid game. He will be able to, however, bottle the Illusion Rune or maybe not, ADTR, causing another Rune Deny to happen. Why? And finally, the longest introductions I've ever had was good. Well, uh, on the top lane here, Nature's Prophet, Orb of Venom, taking the build right out of Ghost's uh, booklet there, and yeah, he's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Tide. Yeah, I like the point you made about the Doom. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, he's actually a really good mid-hero by that logic. Like, he doesn't have to win the lane. He's like a Dragonite, except you start with a Midas, so it's it's pretty nice. Uh, and you can't get a lot for that. I mean, it's not the hardest gank either. I mean, I guess it depends on your lineup. Getting Scorched Earth and running away is actually pretty good uh, if there's not a heavy stuns. But he'll he'll do fine. Something I wanted to point out about this tri lane versus tri lane though, is I, I don't like aggressive tri lanes against Lycan. Like, the hero can rebound so quickly. And it's not like they're really shutting him out that much. They're slowing his farm a bit. But I, I don't think it matters. I think... You're much better off like getting a really good pushing lineup, bringing down the tier one, maybe the tier two in in your uh, safe lane if you're the prime, and then transition that to like bring down mid. Like you gotta take map control, you gotta ward up the enemy jungle, and like that's the only way I think you keep a lichen from rebounding. The reason I do like it is because they have a Nature's Prophet. If they didn't have a Nature's Prophet, I'd absolutely agree with you. Actually, in mid lane, there's going to be a lot of damage on Doom. He's going to be fine, though. It's going to be bottom where they go in onto the Skyrath. They will not fully body block him, but there's enough damage. The hero creep trying to YOLO everyone and uh, actually blocking out Skyrath a little bit. I think he does either way. But Nefari gets a lot of right-click damage, sends a couple strikes to FZ, FZ, and they could have gone in for a second stun there. But in the end, uh, don't go for it. It's going to be Koala on the back end. Body blocks him with the fear, Nate, the Treants. And OK, taking a lot of damage. Yeah, he's going to keep running. I would like to see him throw the cask. He will. FZ, FZ will take that Q to turn around. Oh my gosh, the RNG on that. The Jeez. paralyzing cask coming through. And now the Wolves going to chase away Phoenix. So they kill the supporting cast, but FZ, FZ is still here. He's going to eat a stun. He's too far away from that. And let's see what he can do. He's got another Hal in two seconds. And this might actually be enough to find another kill. Let's see if he's going to use it. He's going to wait for the slow to go out. He's going to transition onto the Wraith King now. There's that uh, static link coming out. It will be broken. The Paralyzing Cast is going to be bouncing. It is rank 2, and now the Wraith King will fall. They're going to go back in now onto the Razor. He's taking 28 damage. It's not really that much. It's enough to actually find another kill on the Witch Doctor. And now FC is like, all right, I'll get out of here. And now he skills up that Feral Impulse, which actually does make him a lot scarier. Uh, now that he's got those wolves out. So the 2 one, one skill build here Check out top for FZ. Though, Ghost is going to go ahead with his three points in Anchor Smash, pull the Creep Wave to the Neutrals, farm up the Neutrals and the Dire Creep Wave, get a ton of gold and a lot of damage on the tower. It's already below half with the Skeets Creep wailing away. Doom is finally making his rotation up there, but it's been a long time coming. And end of the day, that's two-thirds of your tower's HP gone. The, na the Tide Hunter at 34 CS, and you've drawn essentially even on that bottom lane skirmish. I mean, obviously two for three, uh, the Prime are a little bit further ahead, but not significantly enough when you have this Nature's Prophet. As I was kind of trying to say earlier, is when you have a Nature's Prophet to lend his hand to the tri lane, that's a four versus three. You should dominate that matchup. But it was kind of wish-washy, a lot of tower dives, and in the end, they come up with only a small advantage. Turns out Witch Doctor is a good hero if you're diving a tower and fighting off of your creeps. They had the tree ants, and I will say it is very unfortunate for Nefari that he died to that cask. But, I mean, you got to expect the worst, I feel like, when you start diving a Witch Doctor. Like, I could get hit by this cask, you know, like every single time. Uh, and he pretty much did. But here we go. Courier is there. Ty thinks about taking a swing at it, but he won't. 
And I don't think there's any kill potential there. It's a cast gone to one person. OK is up in the top lane right now. And I think they've got FZFZ to a point where they will maybe just leave him and they'll, they'll rotate the supports elsewhere. As I mean, he's doing fine. Like the fact that you're getting a, about to get a tower in another lane and the Lycan didn't even have to do anything about it. Like Tidehunter is the person taking this tower. I feel like mm -hmm. that's that's pretty good. Yeah, not too shabby. A, couple, a lot of canceled TPs from uh, the Nature Provoc while just kind of thinking about a couple of opportunities and to gank to pick somebody off. But in the end, there's a lot of tree cutters here. If you look at it, like ADTR has tangos, Quelling Blades up on be uh, proud. FCFC. Yeah, they, they are really hating the trees here. And there's really low vulnerability when it comes down to being caught out. Okay, finally used that shared tango uh, that it was given to him earlier. So he won't, he could be caught in Sprout, but... Otherwise, yeah, I think they're looking pretty good to get out of a bad spot. Four out of five heroes being able to get out of Sprout immediately. Yeah, those tangles will go away. That's why always, it's so funny. Like, you need Sprout to gank early on Nature's Prophet, but it's in the early game, like, right when you hit level four, that people still have those tangos. So Sprout is, like, ineffective as a stun. It, it gets a little bit better later on, and then it falls off completely once four staffs are up. Eh, not completely, but uh, maybe in a big team fight it does. Uh, however, he is doing... Hey, actually going back into the jungle now. He's 22 and 4 on the Nature's Prophet. Like Tidehunter, though, we already talked about it. He was getting creeps, pulling creeps, doing the jungle, pushing a tower. He's 49 and 3 on the CS. Like, this Tide is effectively a one roll right now. And I yeah. feel like that's terrifying because the double ravage into the late game is so strong. And I feel like Tide and Witch Doctor, which are the, like the utility and the support here can out carry the prime with a death ward ags and a double ravage yeah. and they're gonna kill doom here easy easy kill uh, the second skyrath is in range for concussive he's dead like you don't do anything against this unless you do the tide right now and run but no i no, won't even think about it he doesn't see him it is nighttime after all for another like 20 seconds they see that aggression up top and if thought they were gonna dive okay but they might not know that okay is down here in the trees in the bottom lane but really good pick off on the doom he was uh What's his net worth, actually? I just want to look at that since he has Devour. Only 2.6, so he's still like a 1,000 gold behind this Tide. Yeah, he's rotated a lot. He yeah. went from mid to top. He was wish watching in a couple of runes. Just uh, a, not a clear-cut game for him. He'll get there because his uh, Devour is now maxed out, but it's taking the time. All right, and we see that rotation of FZ to the middle lane looking to push on to that Tier 1, where oh, Y2K yeah. is like, oh my gosh, Deja Vu. There's a Skywrath. He's not level 6 yet. Oh, my oh and Viper's oh. going to show up. It's four people. Y2K with the back-to-back -back deaths. No space for him. Is forced to rotate a lot. He goes from top, dies, back to mid, dies, and we'll see where he goes after this. Bottom lane, though, they do get that tower on the side of the prime, so that's actually very nice for them. They can maybe try to take a bit of control uh, of the Radiant Jungle, but I don't think FCFC even cares about it. He'll just start pushing down the towers. Vlad's is almost done here. Koala looking for a courier, gets a couple hits on it. And won't find it. Close call. But yeah, essentially if the tower hadn't been a one for one, then I could attribute it to Doom's death that they were able to get that tower. And I'd say that's a good trade. But because they immediately followed up with the Lycan tower push, yeah, it's just not going to be good across the board for the Prime. I mean, they're going to get the Vlads up on Lycan here. FCFC is looking to just dominate across the map. He can farm jungle, farm Roche, push towers. Right now it's the enemy jungle that he's looking at. But no matter where he goes, he's going to be a very dangerous force a lot of armor for his side so like they're not gonna be razors not gonna be doing that much damage early on and uh, along with that of course he gets the infinite sustain to continue to farm and continue to rebound as you were talking about I've seen oh actually courier again a little bit in danger but makes a, a different path here and it will be able to make its way to the lycanthrope up top yeah, I would just say, I mean, we saw FC farming in the dire jungle there. I figured they'd transition into a push up top. They'll take that tier one. You think they might want to defend their own, but worried about maybe TPing into uh, a Doom, Wraith Fire Blast, or something like that. So they will lose their tier one tower in the middle lane. Maybe a little. Ah, Ravage is not up, so that's probably the reason there. They'll look to trade out the tier two. Lycan's probably going to be pushing faster than, I guess, just the Treants from Koala. And there is no Ags, of course. We're only 10 minutes into the game, so Nefari. Eye of the Storm won't be helping and doesn't even have it as is pretty usual on Razor not getting the alt at 6, maybe pick it up like level 9, 10, 11, something like that. Rank 2 at 11 basically is what you're looking for. Yeah. Normally at this stage in the game with a Tide, you, their tier 1 mid tower would actually be extremely valuable because it protects your Ancients, it gives you a proxy to defend that stack if uh, the enemy tries to uh, put it in jeopardy, try to steal it for themselves. But the Tide here hasn't been stacking, he's just been focusing on his own CS up to 60 
nine now. That is just insane. But yeah, and at the same time, since he hasn't been stacking, he doesn't isn't really tied to this mid lane. Doesn't have any real reason to defend that tower. And as you mentioned, the ravage was unavailable. Now we've got the blink. We've got the ravage, and we've got some incredible fight. But our uh, the prime might be able to move in. If they oh, man. just ice vortex casually, they might actually find him, and that would be huge. Oh, man, but it might not. Ghost is here nestled with the blink that has not been unveiled. They're pushing into a tier 1 tower that's here for the TPs. Oh, I believe boy. everyone's coming. Everyone's already here. There's the Fortify to buy some time, and you know Tide's coming in. There he oh. is. He goes. The Ravage going to land on three. Just misses Phoenix. They'll bring down the Doom. The Death Ward goes out. and wasn't that effective. The Lock goes into place. They'll look to chase Nafari. Arcane Bolt chasing Monang. And another one will go out. He's going to fall. He's a support after all. Not too durable. And it's actually not terrible for the Prime. They only lose two. Lycan doesn't even have to show his face up there. Maybe if he did, he could have shapeshifted. And, well, they definitely would have killed the other two, I think, if Lycan's there. But yeah. it's all right. He's farming the draft for the side of the Prime, but... Honestly, Invasion only have two stuns as well. They have the cast, they have the Ravage, and then everybody TPs. So, no cancels, no chase. They're, yeah. They could have run Maybe a down. Yules on Sky or something with the Tower Gold. Sure, sure. I could see that actually coming into play very effectively. But yeah, I mean, catching anybody can chase all day long with Poison Attack and Viper Strike. But yeah, they can just use that Teleport, can't interrupt it without a stun. So, they're going to actually hold the line here. They're actually baiting him in, and this could be good. Yeah, cast. They get pretty lucky. It was like max range. It doesn't bounce. They'll find Y2K again, but he's been off way more than he can chew. Silenced up. I think ADTR will fall here. The Doom will go out, but not going to disable that Nether Toxin anymore. Oh, Monang, a Wraithfire Blast. Looks like they will be able to find the kill on Kajik Imbo. Ran out of mana slash was doomed. Can't get the mech off. Now FZ, FZ though. Oh, man, coming off that bottom lane and a fast transition into that ultimate form. He's got that Quelling Blade. Will actually just eat the tree and run. Not going to get too greedy and try to chase down Nefari. They realize they are ahead. About 3,500 gold ahead, 5,000 experience. So doesn't want to give up a kill and that rubber band gold back to the prime. It's now 8-5. Razor is your net worth leader, actually, and he's going fast into that BKB. Yep, Ghost, they just though. set him up really well in that fight. But now Phoenix in a really bad spot. The Wolves are going to be hounding him down at only Threat five door. Over. No, he's gone. And able to TP out. Nafari, there you go. Like we talked about, both teams lacking the stuns, and they're people just leaving. Yeah. Doom really just needs a casual put in level death pretty soon. Uh, I guess yeah, Or the War it. Stomp, yeah. Yeah, but you how many times without a blink dagger are you gonna get in position for the war stomp right when you need it? All a hundred percent of the time. Obviously. <laughs> I'll be I'll be proven wrong in thirty seconds. It's just the caster's curse. Uh, yeah, but, it really is. But uh yeah, <laughs> in this situation we're gonna be seeing uh ancient apparition move towards level six. He's almost there. If he had it sooner, the top fight would have been even more clear cut. But you're talking about it, the Razor actually got a lot of gold out of that last fight. I mean he's three one and two now. Oh. Only sixty five CS. He's last hit a couple towers and go looks like there's a that that dead aggressive column. warding put it down. Oh wait, a nature's prophet. Let's kill him. So a ward and a kill for invasion. It works. Some fish food for tide. Certainly. And uh, yeah, I mean the is just doing really well because he got some clutch kills in the last fight. He got the full static link off and that was very beneficial for him doing the the killing blows to where he needed. I think he also last hit his tower earlier, but. At the end of the day, he can't carry this game by himself. Needs Doom to catch up to the full extent. I mean, when's the last time you saw a Doom that was 15 minutes into the game, a uh, fifth in the net worth chart? Like, uh, I think the last time I saw it was when the team with that Doom probably lost. Yeah, generally speaking, that's how it goes. Ravage on bottom, Nefari, solo Ravage, solo Mystic Flare, which tends to be the case, and they will be able to bring down the Razor. Yeah, it's a big kill. Like we said, he was on top of the net worth. He's really still Doom? neck and neck what with the, the Viper and Doom? Koala thinking about coming in here and Monang Doom. Oh, yeah, there's the Doom you're Seriously? questioning. Very aggressive TP will be brought down quickly. Now the Death Ward Monang is going to fall. He is level 7. Probably should have held the point, which is very common on that incarnation or reincarnation, yeah, but he will go down. Yeah, and Ice Blast is even going to miss there. Now the cast coming in, as I like to call it, the Mini Ravage. Uh, Arcane Bolt chasing. Can they get him, though? Another Arcane Bolt coming out. Cooldown on that. Very, very low. Monang silenced up. It's still got to be Koala. We've got to watch. The Maledict will go off, but again, still able to TP out there. It is now 13-5, to 5, and just a very dominant performance here. I mean, Game 2 was close for a while because you got a Medusa. Your power curve isn't very good early on, but in this game, it's just Invasion just walking over people. 
I, even if the Doom was full HP there, I can't imagine that TP being a good idea. It was so, like, it's such a long one, too. Like, he was the third tier to TP to that tower at, at, within the interval of delay. And, yeah, I, I kept on, like, every second, I'm like, okay, he's going to cancel it now. Okay, he's going to cancel it now. He's going to cancel that TP. Why isn't he canceling that TP? And then suddenly he's there in the fight, getting silenced, getting killed, picked off. Like, there was no fight for him there. Even if he gets the Doom off, at most, they bring somebody low. They don't even kill them. Like, that was just a very poor decision. And, yeah, we got all this heal now. Like, how do you even kill off Invasion to get that rubber band gold? Right now, we've got Voodoo Restoration at two points in it. You get the mechanism up for the Viper. And everybody in general has a level advantage over your team. So they're going to have more stats to work with. Like, I just don't see you getting those kills, even if the Ancient Apparition ulti hits. But, obviously, Phoenix throwing it to the dirt on that one. Four heroes possibly could have at least put the debuff on, and he hits zero. Easy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the only way they win a fight is you doom the Viper, so there's at least no mech use for the people that Ice Blast doesn't hit, or you land an Ice Blast on everybody, or some combination of both, um, to just stop the healing. But even then, I don't know if it matters, because, like, if you don't, if you doom Viper to stop a mech, then you got the Ravage to deal with, and honestly, the double Ravage is not far away from Ghost. Like, 7.2k net worth, he's already got the Perseverance and 500 gold in the bank, like it's coming and i don't know the necro book also came out in the last couple minutes necro 2 already finished i feel like necro book you get the first one and the necro book 3 comes out in like 10 seconds afterwards feels like that doesn't it? it's a pretty quick ramp up there and you're already farming fast as a hero like lycan but we're gonna see the concussor shot come out into y2k the wolves were the ones to give vision but although they were in range with the sky wrath they weren't willing to pursue with the tide he has haste he has blink though and here's an easy pick for him that long cooldown reincarnate not going to be back up anytime soon, and uh, it looks like Wraith King is just gradually farming up a blade mail. He's going to be dropping a few more times before he sees that one to completion. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the item, right? You just want to return some of that damage, make so uh, the Lycan can't focus you, or Sky kills himself off a of Mystic Flare, but I won't be surprised if this game ends and he doesn't even find that blade mail. Looking at Nefari now starting to fall back. Oh, man, that's not good efficiency out of your BKB. That's a 10-second charge right now there for Nefari. Still got a few good charges to work with. Tries to give chase. He will drain 168 damage, but is forced to back off. I mean, honestly, Invasion just playing a little careful there. They don't have the vision. They don't know who's behind that, and a lot of people off the map. So they back off, but could have easily just turned around and probably could have 4v5'd it. Yeah, this is... Uh, I mean, the BKBs will help once they get that up. They got it on Razor, they're going to get it up on Doom, and they'll be able to deal with the fights a little better. But you still got a lot of physical damage coming in. The Necros hit pretty hard once you get them hasted and howled up. The Death Ward will be level 11, rank 2 pretty soon. Uh, I don't know. It's just they have a long road ahead of them if they bring themselves back into the game and they have just I, I like i said i won't say that the draft was entirely greedy but there's a lot of heroes that need a lot of items and right now for example the ancient apparition if you if they're winning the game ancient apparition has the agonists by the end of it but there is like no way he gets that within 20 25 minutes with all the other heroes that need farm or that the game is even going to go that much longer. I mean, I guess... Details. Details. I'm trying to find an opening for these guys. <laughs> ah, sorry, sorry. I'm being I'm being a negative Nancy right now. But FZ, FZ already with the level 2 Necronomicon. Uh, rank 3 about to be out. He'll use this. There's no Fortify for another 55 seconds. So the Tier 2 will fall. They can maybe transition to the bottom. They actually need to stop the push from Nature's Prophet. So maybe they just go there for the Tier 2. But if they want, I mean... Roshan's on the table. You just kill Doom again. That's also on the table. The Maledict has landed, so he is dead. Ah, you would think so, anyways. Let's see For that. Sure Mal Whoa, 250 damage off of that Maledict coming out. And that is only two points in it. This guy, okay, kind of splits the build, which normally I would not like, but 4 2 2, whatever. Seems pretty good. For right now, Ice Blast wow. is going to land on a 3. BKB for Nefari will still go down. Was caught with that Ravage beforehand, it looked like. So the top net worth heroes there. Actually, no, Nature's Prophet a little ahead of the Doom. But the Doom and the Razor being brought down on the Prime. And it's a uh, yep, easy transition into the Roshan pit right now. Vladimir's offering. I mean, Lycan can solo this pretty quickly. It can be even faster with the backup. Well, they, they kill Witch Doctor. So that's, yeah, that's I was nice. just pointing that out. He dies. Sad boy. Bible thump. That's uh, a kill, one of their six. 
trying to find other things to talk about that are positive for the Prime, but it, it just looks bleak. I mean, Invasion have played just really good Dota. I mean, we see them play this level Dota against the higher tier SCA teams and have pulled upsets, make big things happen, nearly qualified for um, the Summit SCA, um, but they did get dropped down at the the tail, the very, very end of it. But uh, top lane, we're gonna see a TP come in. The Wrath Ice Blast will come through, hit on Ghost, and he is not TPing for some reason. Uh, finally, the Wraith can get some range so that he could stun it, whether or not the TP was going or not, and yeah, they actually bring him down. So, I mean, you gotta consider the mini stun on level death, the stun on Wraith King, and uh, although they're not quick, they were in the right place at the right time. Well, Bottom it's not lane, though. it's not quite, but it's almost a free trip back to base for the Tide to just finish his perseverance, or uh, finish his refresher even after that death and losing some gold. He's very, very close to that, which means a double Ravage at 22 minutes. I mean, that's like a late game threat that comes online sometimes 40 minutes. I don't know the average, but maybe 35, 40 seems reasonable to me. Uh, he's got it at 23 minutes, we'll give it to him. So that that seemed bad if you're the prime, you're not looking. I mean, when Razor's BKB has already done to seven seconds, yeah, it's kind of Yeah, it's, it's scary stuff. Shaking in their boots, I'm sure. But they're not giving up. They're still going for it. They will take off that last tier one. And they actually have done a pretty good job pushing down those towers. But I feel like Invasion kind of gave it to them. They, they could have defended, but they didn't. They just went for the quick trades, maybe the riskier trades. They bring down all the outer towers now at 22 minutes and start working towards the high ground. Tier three towers having already taken damage in two of the three lanes. So we're going to see them push on down bottom. This is kind of like, I would say, their desperation fight. Like, they have to make this fight happen. Mystic Flare onto three. Not really how you want to use it, but there is a big death ward. And now FZ, FZ going to get involved. He's got the Ice Blast, so there's no lifesteal here, but he's still got that crit doing a ton of damage. He'll focus now onto Phoenix. Disappears. He's eating ice cream. It's Lycan's favorite snack. Monang now going to be the next focus. Will be a big sprout up here, but he still has that Coiling Blade. He's going to drop out of Shapeshift form, but let's not forget he's got an Aegis. He will even get a parting kill there. And now Koala is the one in trouble. Uh, gets into the tree line, but now Monang, he had that reincarnate, going to be kited away, and they will find the kill there. Necro 3 popped out to transition into pushing this lane. Uh, has not mentioned Apparition's already respawned. He's just level 6. <laughs> Everyone's level 11 at least, and then level 6. This hero does not play well from behind. Not too, not hardly at all. And, uh, I mean, that was their best opportunity. Fighting without the tide before he picked up the refresher. That, that should have been the Prime's fight, but because they're so far behind, they can only make it a, uh, I guess, a 3 for 3 plus Reincarnate. Like, it's just bad. We're going to see Phoenix out of mana, heading back to the well. And, uh, yeah, when, at most, this game takes until the next Rush Cycle, unless the Prime do something just miraculous with this game. Like, I mean, Nature Prophet can rat really hard. Like, this, if this was Admiral Bulldog in his Prime, I would say maybe there was a chance for him to do something with it, but... Even an Indonesian legend like Koala, I have my doubts. We will see Ice Blast fly through and uh, the Death Push come in. Yeah, sorry, I was I was watching the stream because it caught up to my Bible thump drawing. I was very proud of it, but I will actually realize that I drew the mouth like in the wrong place and terribly. <laughs> so we'll try again later on. Uh, but 19 and 9 right here at 24 minutes. Here comes what could be the game ending push in the bottom lane. Tide is there this time, and he does have that double Ravage. There's a one! He'll catch Justin Afari with it. It's about all they need. No buyback. He's down for 50. And, well, they're going to stick with it. There's a Ravage number two! Will catch both Koala and Monang, and it's going to be the Razor to, or actually the Nature's Prophet to just disappear. Blade Mail up for the Prime. He does finish it, so he makes me eat my words a little bit, but the Necro units clean him up easily enough. FCFC going to get locked in place with the cold feet. There's a Doom onto OK, but does not disable the healing there as he still has that heal activated. And now at 25 minutes, they lose that bottom lane of Rax, and there's no buybacks here for the Prime, and they tap out. GG, well played from Koala. It's an evasion taking the series, only having to play two games and taking the series 3-0. Somehow they manage that. Well, that's tough. I mean, Razor didn't even get the chance to use a 7 second BKB there, and you know, the Refresher Orb is the nail in the coffin. I don't think they even needed that remotely to win it out because of the advantage that they had, but it is a nice little kind of cherry on top pickup for them. This Tide had 483 GPM in a 25 minute game. Like, how do you farm that fast? Ghost pulling out the, 
the number one position tied, as you put it, and jeez, that CS value is absolutely insane. Being able to just kind of do his own thing, push away, get the early items that he needs, and uh, just to pull forward with that heart mechanism on Viper, refresher blink on Tide. At 25 minutes, nobody can survive that, and certainly not the prime here. Unfortunately, that means they will be eliminated. They will not be going to advance to the next stage for MPGL. And it is going to be Invasion to go up against Hot 6 MVP to contest for that spot. Yeah, Hot 6 was actually looking really good yesterday. Of course, we saw one of the more innovative strats. Uh, it was the first time I had seen it, uh, but I was informed that they haven't been using that in KDL. It was They've done it like three or four times, but uh, a lot of people were excited to see that they could still make it work in another tournament and on you know the, the grander stage, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it, it should be a great best of five. That's going to be tomorrow, guys, so do... Come enjoy that here on twitch.tv slash beyond the summit. And as always, big shout out to them for having us on. Also, MPGL for putting on this tournament season six. Looking for that last team to get into the LAN finals here. Joining actually a lot of teams. Uh, but either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the game here. Casting by myself, I'm Helium. You can follow me on Twitter at Heliumbrella to find out when, where, and what I'm casting. Whether it be Dota 2 or nowadays Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And then also Blaze here at Blaze Casting. And... Any parting words, shout-outs, call-outs? Well, uh, shoutout services delaying our games. Yeah, thank but, you for uh, that. Beyond that, uh, yeah, just thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate your viewership here, and uh, nice to see some SCA Dota trying to get back on its feet. Uh, any tournament that you know continues a respectable run in the SCA scene right now is always promoting the the teams and giving them the opportunity to shine, and that's close to my heart. Is it's it's kind of struggling. I mean, when you consider t a situation with Team Malaysia and uh, all these other factors, the 322 and all that. Yeah, anything that continues to help promote the SCA scene, I'm all about. And really appreciate you guys for tuning in and helping expose that even further uh, by just viewing in Dota TV or on stream. So that's all for me. Thanks, and uh, see you next time. Yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow for the finals here in the wild cards. Peace out.